Welcome to Everlasting Love. My name is Patricia King, and I'm really glad that you've joined us for today's program. I have a very special guest and a very close friend of mine, a woman that I admire big time, and it's Heidi Baker. Hi. Heidi Baker, you truly are one of my heroes. In fact, um, if Hebrews 11 was being written today, your name would be in that hall of heroes of faith. Oh, I love him and I love you. It's good to be here. <laughs> it's awesome to have you here. You know, we are living in an exciting day and hour because the God of justice and the God of mercy, the God of great compassion is mobilizing the corporate body to go and bring their light into the darkness like never before. Come on. And so today we're going to talk about stopping for the one which is your life message, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the first time I, I, I got to know you, it was so big on your heart. Stop for the one, stop for the one, stop for the one. In fact, I think one of our earliest interviews with you that's still up on xpmedia.com was about stop for the one. Mm -hmm. So, um, but share with us, uh, because there's, there's a key. A lot of times we think stop for the one, that means stop for someone who's suffering in that. But there's one that we need to stop for first. The one who is the one. The one who is the one. <laughs> we, as we stop for him and he just loves us and you just feel his presence invade your heart and your spirit, you feel so full that you start seeing like he sees. You start loving like he loves. And that love and that fullness comes from him. And as we stop for Him and we adore Him and we worship Him and we're intimate with Him, we start thinking like He thinks. I love it. I love it. You've been in Mozambique for many years. Mm -hmm. God called you actually when the nation was in a big crisis. And I mean, there was killings and shootings and murders and, you know, things were getting blown up, buildings and vehicles and all mm -hmm. that. And then you just receive from the Lord that you are to go. Yeah. Um, he just said, go to the poorest nation on earth. And I was so excited. And when I found out they were blowing up Red Cross trucks, I, I just said, yes, Lord. You know, I want to run into the darkest places. And I want to call people to run into the darkness as fearless lovers, because when you're full of His light, mm -hmm. you can go into the darkness and it explodes like the noonday sun. We're little people, but in His presence, in His love, things change. And so being just possessed by God's love, possessed by Him, mm -hmm. we can go anywhere. I love it. Yeah. And you went into Mozambique with nothing. You'd given away everything. Mm -hmm. You didn't even have a home. <laughs> <laughs> I had nowhere to sleep after three days. Wow. And you just yeah. sat there and, and sat he told on you a to street sit corner. on the street corner and let the children teach you. Yeah, he said, just sit on a street corner. I just finished my PhD. <laughs> and uh, he said, don't teach anyone. You need to learn. Wow. I learned from the poor for many years, lived in the slums with Roland and my children. But then he said, now you need to learn from the children. And what I said, I don't, well, it, they taught me everything. They taught me what dependence looks like. You know, we can talk about saving the world, but we must be dependent on daddy, on God. Mm -hmm. he, we don't have what it takes to save the world. We don't have what it takes to change the world, but he does. And in him, we will too. So these kids taught me about humility dependence, desperation, hunger, longing. And they also taught me about giving. They gave me their language. They took care of me. Little kids with shredded rags took care of me. They defended me. They loved me. When I got thrown in jail, they all, all the prostitutes and all the street gang, they, they don't like the police. <laughs> they right, don't like right. being there. They came outside of the jail and they're like, let mama go, let mama go. <laughs> because of the love that we had. And it came as, as I went low and slow. And as they gave me their beauty, their encouragement, their power that came just from God Himself. They're created in His image. You could say, well, how if they don't know Him? How could they have any God in them? 
but they do. They're created in His image and they're children and the kingdom belongs to them. And so many of them got saved then. You brought them into your very own home. You would yeah. see the struggling children and um, you shared a story about a little girl who was being sold by her own mother mm. for a loaf of bread or a can of Coke was sold for sex. Yeah. You know, and... One girl I found, I won't use her name, but uh, I was just on the street like usual, you know. I'm Now I'm in the bush bush, but for years I was out in Maputo before I went to the north. And I saw this little girl and, and there were these boys and it was, oh, I remember the day because it, you can't forget a day like this. There were these guys and they were young kids, like 15, 16 year old kids and they were fighting and they had guns and knives and I just felt that's wrong you know they can't kill each other and I just stepped right in the middle of them and I said stop it and they put down their weapons and they said sorry mama it was so beautiful sorry mama and I thought you know I'm not very tall or big or anything but they knew that God was inside of me. He's yeah. living inside of me. He's living inside of you. That's why you shine so much. And you know, the, the scripture, scripture is just coming to my mind right now, Heidi, is it says, the Spirit of God is in us and through us He will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. Yes. So it's like all you had to do is shine the love and the Holy Spirit brought the conviction. Right. I just stepped in. Yeah. And that's the love of God's inside yeah. of us. And then they dropped their weapons. I didn't say put down your guns and yeah. knives. I just said stop it. And God showed up. Yeah. But I looked over to the side and I see this beautiful, strikingly beautiful girl. But she's in agony. And I can tell she's in agony. And I, I went over to her and I said, what's going on with you? And she said, um, and she had bite marks all over her. She was bitten. And I said, what's going on with you? And she said, my uncle tied me to a tree. He raped me and let all of his friends rape me. And I just like my heart, you know, I'm looking at this girl. She's so beautiful. She's so precious and pure it, it, in beauty. And I thought, that's just so wicked. And anger rises up in you, but, but love has to conquer the anger. And God said, just um, bring her home, you know. That's why we have so many kids, and it's why I look a little crazy to people, because I don't stop. I won't stop building. I won't stop believing. Because he said, stop for all of them, one by one by one. And now thousands of us are stopping one by one. But this little girl, she came home with me. And she's grown up now, and um, you've just helped us to start her salon, you know. And, and I'm thinking, this little girl is shining with the light of God's glory, love, and her life is transformed. What if we just said, go your way, sweetie, be well, be well fed, you know. Sorry you got raped and tied to a tree. Just What if we counted or something and said, it's too much, too much. We can't do that. We have to stop for the one. But all of us, every day, have to stop for the one who is the one, and then the one. When you receive his heart, and he shows you what he sees, because otherwise you don't see it. No. But when you start crying out in his presence and asking him to show you you know what he sees and it's called the fellowship of his sufferings because yeah. he sees every suffering child yeah. and there's so much going on with the sex trade right now I know that uh, with our work in Cambodia it's like every time I see a child that has been used in a wrong way because they're they're sold for sex day in and day out by the hour sometimes five dollars two hours you can get a child for but it compels you to do something about it love compels yeah. And it, it's not even an effort. It's like that righteous indignation 
that rises up from the heart of Jesus that shows you that child. It'll make you do whatever it takes to make sure that child is okay. Yeah. It's not an effort. It's not like saying, oh no, well, I'm going to have to not buy that extra handbag this month, or I won't be able to do this, or I won't be able to do that. It doesn't enter the mind. It just like, whatever needs to be done right now, we will do it. It's like the Good Samaritan. He came by and he said, whatever is needed, I'll pay for it. I'll do whatever it takes yeah. to make sure that this person is brought into wholeness. And that's what happens when you stop for the one, the one who is the one, and let him fill your heart mm. with what breaks his heart. Then when he shows you, it compels you to action. Yeah. And that's what we're gonna talk more about right after this break. I want you to, during this break, connect with the one who is the one. He's about ready to do something so big in your life that you'll never be the same again. Our awesome God of love is calling his whole body to action right now. And that means you. And we'll talk more about that after this break. And we're going to show you a special video clip from Heidi's work in Mozambique, where you're going to see things and hear things that are going to touch you deeply. And we'll show you a way that, that you can respond. He is so awesome. And he loves you. And his eyes upon you right now. Get ready to encounter the extravagant love of God as full-time missionary and mother of the faith, Heidi Baker shares her personal stories in her four CD teaching set, Wrecked by His Love. Come like a child, ready to be changed forever. Call 866-980-5464 and order television offer number 155 or visit our online store at xpmedia.com to order Heidi Baker's set, Wrecked by His Love. Only $20. Order now. Recent discoveries in science are revealing the miraculous healing power of God like never before. Dig into the Word of God and the world of quantum physics with Patricia King, David Vancouver, Katie Souza, and Joanne McFadden as they bring amazing insights into divine health and healing power. Join us for Quantum Healing in Phoenix, Arizona, August 10th and 11th, and take a quantum leap into healing, health, and wholeness. Become a Breaker Team partner today. Go online to xpmedia.com. Well, welcome back. Our program is titled Stop for the One. And of course, we know that the first one we stop for is for Him. Mm. As we worship Him, He stops for us and fills us and gives us His vision and gives us His heartbeat. But you know, Sometimes, I'm, I'm sure, in fact, I know that it can be overwhelming when you see all the needs, when you see this one and that one and the other one, and all of a sudden, all of the homes are filled and all of the food is given out and there's still children left to be mm -hmm. fed. And um, tell us about that. How do you cope with that? How do you handle that? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I have to be honest. There are days when I think I, I don't want to see anymore. I rather not see, but when he's opened your eyes and he's put compassion in your heart, you know you have to see. One thing for me is letting other people see mm -hmm. because one person or a thousand people can't do right. enough. It has to be every single human being I love who that. loves Jesus. Yeah, I love that. And that is the hour we're in right now. God is seriously seriously mobilizing his yeah. body right now. Yeah. We are in a season where there's so much oil on that. In fact, I want to say to you that that the Lord, even by watching this program, you're going to receive an oiling of his heart that's going to come into you that is going to call you yeah. to action, either to pray, to give, to go, to share. You know, you you won't be able to leave this program and not do something. 
because God's calling his entire body to reach out to children at risk. And I remember years ago, Heidi, we were doing an event in, in Scotland together and there was a lot of warfare actually on the home front in Mozambique at that time and you were longing to go back and you were in tears at one point saying that there's so many more children to be released but I think the board had told you, you know, we can't take any more, mm -hmm. we're maxed out, every place is filled, the government won't let us have any more, there's no more money yet to go around, you know, we can't do any more right now. Mm -hmm. And your heart was broken, you were in tears. So how can I stop? There's more children. There's more children to be rescued. And I remember being so touched by that when I saw the agony of your soul. And I thought, well, I can't go do what you're doing. I'm not feeling the call to do that, but I, I just, I knew I wouldn't be able to do that. But I thought, but I can support Heidi. I can get they're behind her and build some houses and look after some children and you know support those children on a monthly basis and we can do that and so I I pledged at that time to help you and ever since then we've been partnering together with you it's one of the greatest Thank privileges you. and the greatest joys of our ministry is to financially support that whole mandate that you live in and walk in every day because as you reach the one so do we we yeah. can reach the one through we our do. finances, <laughs> through our prayers, through through our support. And I think that's really important for people to know that, you know, together in Jesus, we can do it. Yeah, we can. I, I'm thinking of one little girl. You know, sometimes we look at the multitude and we freak out. Like just recently, we had a little bit of we call it our gooey spaghetti, iris spaghetti, you know, and we wanted to share with the village kids. And I was reaching out this, this plate to share with the kids that were around, and the plate tipped over, and it looked like 30, 40 hands. Just, they, gra they just grabbed every bit of scrap of food before it hit the ground. And I broke again. It's like I've been doing this for 30 some years. I've been living among the poor and stopping for the one, but this can overwhelm you again when you just see this complete desperation for one little tiny bit of, bit of food. And it's like, this is my world. And I think in a world of liposuction and diet pills, does any child have to die of starvation? Does any child have to go to bed starving, hungry? Is that necessary in this world, in this place that is so filled with abundance? And I think, what does love look like? If it doesn't look like food, if it doesn't look like water, if it doesn't look like Father's heart, pouring out and providing a home, then it's, it doesn't look like anything in my eyes. And there's no one in the Western world, I don't think, no one who couldn't support one child. They, that's true. Even a teenager could do it. Even a first grade classroom could do it. These kids, I mean, they don't even have schools no chance to go to school, will go into a, a village and there will be no school there, at not even one school. How can they get out of abject poverty? They run to Jesus, they run to meet Him, they know Him, they love Him, but they can't live and die mm. where they die of 80 cent pill for malaria. They just die because they don't have 80 cents they die without a chance at an education. And, and I think that's, that's just not, not right. It's not right. And we can't let them die. We cannot let them die. Did you hear that? We cannot let them die. You know, many of us will go to a coffee shop and buy a coffee every single day of the week. Every single day of the week. We think, oh, well, it's just a little bit money here and a little bit of money there. We go down buy our freezies or whatever it is. But, you know, if we gave that amount of money, what we spend every day on a coffee or a latte or whatever, we could support so many children. We could look after children that are dying today. It's that easy. We cannot ignore it. You see, if your heart's being touched by the Lord right now, 
if you have stopped for the one, the one who is the one, and allowed him to speak into your life, allowed him to, to, to let his heart be your heart, then you would have the love to reach out to one beyond yourself. Yeah. And that is what God is doing for us right now. Mm. We can do it. What a privilege that we can stop for the one. You don't have to meet all the needs of every poor people in all the world, but you can stop for one right now. You can stop even having a coffee every day for one. You can stop having a hamburger once a week for one. And, you know, just remember, this is for the poor. This is for the poor. We're going to show you a clip right now from Iris Ministries. You know, you can go on Iris Ministries, no, irismin.org the website and you can sign up to support a child right now it doesn't take very much hardly anything per month and you can save the the life of a child the destiny of a child you know Moses was a child at risk in his day and he was rescued by by three women his mm -hmm. mother his sister and Pharaoh's wife and as a result of that, the destiny that was inside of him, because someone cared, three women combined what they had. You know, maybe there's three of you in the household who combine what you have mm. and rescue a little boy in a basket who was crying. When the basket was opened, Pharaoh's wife said, oh, he's a beautiful child. Yeah. He's a beautiful child. You can rescue a beautiful child right now and see them stand before the Lord, the God of all eternity full and fulfilled in their destiny and all it takes is just a little bit if we all do our little part. Watch this clip now. I had a vision. I had a vision that changed my life and I'll never be the same. I saw um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of children. And I, I thought, I don't want to see this. And I started screaming out loud, no, no. And then Jesus showed up. He looked at me with those eyes of love, those burning, shunned, I burning, passionate, fiery eyes of love, just like, and he looked at me and everything just changed. He looked at me and he said, there's always enough because I died. There's always enough because I died. This little girl taught me what love looks like. She, she taught me what love and mercy looks like. I know what this little girl does. You know, she has to sell her body, her one-legged body to eat. She sells her one-legged body to get a piece of bread. She sells her one-legged body, her one-legged 10-year-old body to drink a Coca-Cola. You know, this is like, somebody stop for one, somebody, you know, this, this, this little girl is suffering out here. Like, the pain in her was incredible. And grandmother's a witch doctor. So when the house burned down and her leg burned off, grandmother said to the two older brothers, go out to the field and kill Helena. Kill her, stone her, because she's of no use to us. She's no value to us. She has no leg. So the brothers go out to the field and they throw rocks at her head and they think that she's dead. They think she's dead, but she's not. And she's lying there, bloody, broken, dying. This is so much. It's so clear. You can read the gospel and you can read it. And if you just talk to people and you don't understand that love looks like something and you just say to Elena, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. What a cruddy mess of a life you have. And you don't say to her, come home and live with me. Then love is it. I don't know what love is if it doesn't look like something. And one day after a while, she just looks at me and she goes, Mama, I want to go home. And I, I just, I thought, no way. The, my first reaction was no way. 
No way. Uh, no. I wanted to, I just said, no, no, you're not going back to that home. That's like, that's the most dysfunctional family that I've ever heard of. And I know a few, you know, it's like that one, no. And she said, what do you mean? How do you, do you think you told me about grace? She said, you said Jesus forgives. You said Jesus loves. You said Jesus loves. You said love looks like something. You said, you said mercy. She said, how can I not go home and tell my family about Jesus? How can I not go home and tell them about love? I just pray for radical love to just rock this generation, God. I ask you for love to just come in and, and, and stretch every heart, God. Show them what love looks like, God. Show them what love looks like, God. That they would just go out to the darkest places. They would go to the brothels. They would go to the drug dens. They would go to the streets. They would go to the villages. They would go to the universities and they would stop for the one. And they would, they would stop for the one every single day of their life. not complicated. It's just stop for the one. Just want to share a vision that really changed my life and I believe propelled me into stopping for the one. I was praying and I had at the time, it was years ago, about 17 years ago, I only had 320 kids and I was so exhausted. And I thought, I don't want any more. And I get this vision of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kids. And it freaked me out. I started screaming, no. And then I saw Jesus. And once I saw Jesus, uh, what could I say? His eyes of burning love just just looked at me and then he pulled a piece of flesh out of his right side and he just pulled it out and placed it um, in front of me and and I took it and I thought that's so ugly and it turned into bread in my hands and he said feed it to the children and I fed it to the children and he said to me there's always enough because I died and then he took a cup of blood and water from his side and he filled it and it was full of suffering and joy. Suffering is seeing, joy is knowing. You're his hands, you're his feet, you're his eyes, see. Get ready to encounter the extravagant love of God as full-time missionary and mother of the faith, Heidi Baker shares her personal stories in her full CD teaching set, Wrecked by His Love. Come like a child, ready to be changed forever. Call 866-980-5464 and order television offer number 155 or visit our online store at xpmedia.com to order Heidi Baker's set, Wrecked by His Love, for only $20. Order now.